it's, it's very hard for people to comprehend. You're sitting down in probably one of the safest places in the world, having a nice afternoon tea on a gorgeous autumn's day, and then you hear these loud bangs. It still to this day seems surreal. It's uh, one of those things as an emergency worker that you practice for, that you plan for, but you never really believe that uh, you'll be needed. And uh, when that day began, around half past one, two o'clock for me, uh, it was, I suppose, the culmination of a whole career of training and, and, uh, and preparedness. I was uh, on the coast at our place there and driving back, uh, heard it on the, on the car radio. At the time, my brain immediately thought there's been some terrible um, um, bus accident. We got some idea on the way that there'd been some form of shooting, but we weren't sure how many or what the actual story was. It was just completely outside any experience and no way of anticipating something like that, I don't think. Uh, I have images and uh, smells um, that, you know, that make up the whole um, deal of what happened down there. I tend not to, to dwell on them too much, I tend to store them away. From memory I was told uh, 20, 20 dead at Port Arthur, get here now. I was out the back cooking and one of the girls came back through the main, um, the walkway through to the, the service point and she had this absolute look of terror and horror on her face and just unbelief and said that somebody's shooting out there and we'd heard um, bangs going off when I thought it was something that was shorting out, you know, the coffee machine was broken down again or one of the Bain Marie's had shorted out and but everybody was just going to have a look and she sort of physically sort of barred everybody from going through and said, no, no, you can't go out there and um, then we sort of all moved out the back. He shot a lot of people trying to run away. Uh, he shot a lot of people that was just sitting at tables. Um, we were fortunate, he didn't shoot us. He shot people around us, beside us. They were still lying, still on the floor, so it was just fate. So it went in one side and across, into, through my right leg into my left. Um, and yeah, it was pretty painful. It felt like somebody had put a star picket through my leg. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it was just quite unbelievable. My only sadness was that I had time to say goodbye to my boys and my wife. People started moving around and coming out and um, one of the girls came over and she was lovely. She was one of the girls who worked in the cafe. She um, held my hand and mopped me up. After he left, I ran out the back, climbed the hill, and I saw one person hop into a Volvo and drive down the road. That's when the shooting stopped around the cafe. We walked towards the buses where we saw the first few people down and checked them, uh, and then proceeded to the, to the cafe and walked in and was confronted by the scene of the dead people. Got taken up to the um, cafe veranda and given some morphine, which was very gratefully accepted. Um, and then got helicoptered off to the hospital. This event was, uh, was certainly beyond our comprehension. Um, the, I don't remember any of the faces of, um, of the injured that we received. I do remember all of their injuries and I do remember every word they said to me. As we're getting close, we're hearing that um, he's um, taken a hostage 
from a service station and killed a female in a car there. I was notified, I think, late in the day on, of the incident itself that, uh, and given a briefing about uh, what the uh, expectations were. But of course, at that stage, there was a siege, as it's been called, going on down at the seascape. But we didn't really have a solid picture of exactly what was occurring. So my task at that particular stage was to make contact with whoever was at Seascape, just to establish what was going on there. I still remember my partner, um, when I looked to the left as we were going past Seascape at the rate of knots, I couldn't see his head, he was almost on the floor and I don't blame him. When Bryant answered the phone and we had some conversation, um, the, our, our role changed obviously, we became aware that he had some involvement. He talked about uh, a kidnapping. Shots started coming across. Uh, I'm not sure how many shots at the end, but I continued reversing down and um, jumped out of the vehicle and the other police officer was already in a ditch. So I um, bailed, uh, bailed out and got in beside him. And as much as I was stressing to him that I didn't want him um, firing weapons out of the windows, etc., and he was assuring me that he wasn't doing that, of course we were getting information coming back from the scene to suggest that um, he was indeed continuing to fire out through the windows. So you could hear them cracking off in the bush behind, um, you could hear them being tired, you could tell when they're coming your direction and you could see a, hear, see a skip on the road sometimes or you'd see um, a strike on the road or definitely dirt on the other side of the bank. I don't think he thought through um, where it was going to go. Uh, I, I believe he probably thought it was all going to end at Seascape. But by next morning when the building had burnt and Bryant was in custody and uh, the matter was progressing, uh, that's when I was, I guess, becoming involved. I'm, I'm happy he was taken alive because police should never be executioners. But you think about it afterwards and, and, and if he had a shade his face, could I have pulled the trigger? Absolutely, not a doubt. Not a doubt at all. Have no doubts about it. That's a scary thing to face in yourself. That you could actually do that. I've always felt that it was a good thing that he was captured alive. I've felt that it's a good thing that we don't have capital punishment in Australia. And my reasons for that are that as long as he is alive, there is a chance that uh, our community, the victims, the families may one day know why and why there. Uh, if um, he wasn't alive, there's no chance of that. I used to do a lot of hunting and shooting, I had uh, quite a little arsenal of guns. Uh, they were stolen from me a long time prior to Port Arthur. But I could never figure out why people needed automatic or semi-automatic weapons to go pig shooting or whatever the case may be. So I thought it was a great idea, especially after what happened down at Port Arthur. What John Howard achieved um, was fantastic. What we achieved as a society was even better because we went along with him. He, it was his idea, uh, he drove it, but certainly as a society we, we agreed to it and I think we should be very proud of ourselves in doing that because we could be just like the United States now if it wasn't for that. <laughs>